I don't know why I do this sometimes, but I just do. <laughs> uh. Getting cinematic drone shots is actually a lot easier than you think. You see, I've been flying stabilized drones for quite a while now, and I've come to this beautiful island here of Bali to share with you 10 cinematic drone shots that are gonna completely transform your footage. These moves are the moves that I go to every single time I wanna capture really nice cinematic footage, and by the end of this video, you two are gonna be equipped with all the information you need to capture really nice cinematic drone footage. I'm gonna be using the DJI Mini 4 Pro for this video, but if you have any type of DJI stabilized drone, you're gonna be able to perform all of these different maneuvers. Let's get into it. Okay, so before I get into the actual drone moves themselves, I wanna cover two things really quickly. They're also gonna to help to get really nice footage. First being what you do with the controller of your drone, because you wanna be as smooth and precise as you can while operating the sticks on the controller. See, if you're too rough and jerky with the movements, although the gimbal does stabilize the footage quite a bit, it's still gonna translate into your footage. You're gonna get really harsh direction changes. Things like this just do not look professional. So be as smooth as you can on your controller and your footage is gonna thank you for it. And the second thing is you're gonna be shooting in manual camera settings. What this is gonna do is gonna make sure all of your settings are locked before you start filming. Then when you take your shot, you're not gonna have any changes in the exposure, the white balance. These types of things can make your footage look really amateur. So shooting in manual settings is gonna to help to overcome those things. Right, let's get into the first move. So the first move I'm gonna cover is going to be the orbit. Now the orbit in its most basic form is basically the drone performing a full 360 degree rotation around a subject at a fixed height and a fixed distance. Now the orbit is a very versatile shot. One, because you can break down the components of the orbit and use them to your advantage to create very, very nice cinematic movement. Now what the orbit allows the viewer to do, it allows them to see the subject from every single angle and also to see the uh, location the subject is in. But if we wanna take our orbits to the next level, whilst doing the orbit, try and think about things like maybe pulling back whilst doing an orbit that can help to reveal more and more of the landscape that you're shooting in as the orbit progresses. You can also change altitude whilst you're doing the orbit. Try and make sure you keep the camera locked onto the subject at all times, but you can even combine these two things together you can orbit pull back and increase in altitude and doing things like this is just going to help to sort of play on the basis of the orbit whilst helping to take the orbit to the next level and this type of thing can really help make your footage stand out more than you ever thought possible something else with the principles of the orbit is when you take the orbit really 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 far back from your subject say you're filming a broad landscape i'll show you an example here where there was a nice sort of mountain in the foreground with some mountains in the background now I took the principles of the orbit here, but stretched them way far out. So I was only completing sort of five to 10 degrees of the arc of the orbit, but because I was so far away, I generated what's known as the parallax effect, which means the objects in the foreground and the background are moving at different speeds. And when you get this just right, it looks absolutely stunning. So this is a situation where you're using the principles of the orbit, but you're using them to your advantage to create really unique shots. So the second shot I'm gonna cover is actually a two-in-one because it's so simple. So it's flying forwards and flying backwards. Nothing else thrown into the mix, just literal forwards movement or backwards movement. Now we're gonna do this at sort of a medium level of height. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow the viewer to see the landscape that you're filming in. Now, when might you wanna fly forwards and when might you wanna fly backwards? Well, flying forwards is a really good way of opening into a new scene. So flying forwards gives you the feeling that you're coming into, you're entering somewhere new, where if you're flying backwards, it gives you the feeling that you know, you're know you leaving somewhere, something is coming to an end. So if you're flying backwards, try and have this towards the end of the sequence. And if you're flying forwards, you can use this to start the sequence. Shot number three is also a really popular one when it comes to opening a scene. And it's similar to the last one, so it's flying forwards, but this time you start low to the ground, you fly forwards, you increase in height, and you also increase the gimbal tilt up as you fly forwards. What this allows you to do, it allows you to reveal more and more of the scene exponentially as the shot continues. Fantastic one for opening a scene in a new location, great one for showing off a new location, and it just adds a few different layers to the shot. So you're moving forward, you're increasing in height, and the gimbal also moves. It just makes things more dynamic, more interesting for the viewer, and it's a shot that requires a little bit more skill to pull off, but with a bit of practice, you'll be nailing it every single time. Shot number four is gonna be one that you can literally only do with a DJI kind of camera drone like this, and it is the top down with a slight spin. Now what this means, the drone is at a fair altitude, the camera is pointing straight down to the ground, and whilst looking down, you descend slightly and induce a slow spin. Now this looks really cinematic because you've got a little bit of movement going on in the scene. You're also seeing things from a perspective that you cannot see unless you have a drone like this. And it's just a really unique shot, special to drones, 
and one you should definitely be using throughout your sequences just to help to show off scenes in a very different light. Shot number five is another really simple one, but really effective if done in the right situation. And it's just gonna be flying upwards. Now I know that sounds really simple, but with the correct setup, a shot like this can be very powerful. Now the correct setup is gonna look something like having something in the foreground and something in the background so that as you increase in altitude, you get a difference in movement in the foreground and the background of your shot. Now I've got an example on the screen now of what I mean, but it's also a good shot you can use to reveal something because if something in the foreground is blocking whatever you're trying to show in the background, as the drone increases in altitude, the background becomes more and more visible as the shot continues. Now. If you're still a bit sort of unsteady or not very smooth on the sticks, if you start off at a higher altitude, any sort of fumbles you're having with the sticks are gonna be much less noticeable because the closer you are to the ground, any sort of unsmooth action on the sticks is gonna be much more noticeable. So if you're still trying to work on being smooth, start higher up. But if you've got that smooth control movement down to a T, start off low. Shot number six is gonna be the slider or the dolly. And what this basically means is kind of flying sideways. Now it's most effectively used when tracking a subject, say if you're tracking a car or a person, if you have the drone locked onto the subject and then you can just track them either manually or if you have the Mini 4 Pro with Active Track, you can let it do all the hard work for you. But we're gonna track it manually in this situation. So we're just flying along, tracking the object. And if you wanna increase the sort of cinematic flair to this footage, you can try and increase some distance changes and altitude changes. Just remember to try and keep locked onto that subject at all times. So you can either get closer to the subject, get further away from the subject, get higher up or get lower down as the shot progresses. Different things like this just gonna help to add a bit more dynamic movement into your shot. But at first, just practice tracking the subject from the same height, the same distance, and just maintaining them in the same point on the frame. Shot number seven is gonna be flying really, really low or flying really, really high. Now, introducing different levels of flying throughout your drone footage is gonna to help to just increase the cinematic flair and the dynamicness of your footage. Now, what this means, when you're flying really, really low down and you're flying quickly, you're getting a lot of movement in the shot. Everything is going on at once. It feels like you're really zooming through a scene. But then when you're really high up and you're flying at the same speed, things move much slower because of the perspective. And sort of incorporating low and high into your footage is gonna really help to take things to the next level because you're gonna introduce different feelings and emotions into the shots. Now, when you're flying low and fast, people are gonna feel excited, pumped, something's going on. And then when you're flying really high and things are feeling much more gentle and calm, people are just gonna feel more soothed and it's gonna give them more time to take in the broader landscape of where you're filming. So in your next sequences, make sure to include some low shots and some high shots, as well as all the rest that I've talked about already throughout this video. This number eight is gonna be more of a cinematic technique rather than a shot itself. Now what this is gonna mean is we wanna include different distances of shots from whatever subject it is that we're filming. So we wanna include close up, medium distance, and far away. Now what this does, it allows the viewer to get more different areas of perspective over what it is you're filming. So start off really far away, you can see a lot of the landscape, the subject, you can kind of see everything that's going on. Then move in a bit closer, you can kind of get more of an idea of what's happening with the subject, and more detail is being revealed, and then get really close up to the subject, and then that becomes the full forefront of the video. And it helps these three things, close, medium, and far. When you bring them together, you'll see it in a lot of different videos, especially in Hollywood, if you're going through chase scenes and things but it's a really powerful thing to use when filming drone footage as well. Because you have the advantage to just change distances really easy, you should definitely be using this technique when creating footage. Shot number nine is gonna be the drone in a static location, but for this shot to work, you need to have movement within the frame and the framing actually has to look really nice as well. So take time to compose the shot. In this instance here, I'm just above a road. I've composed it nicely, so the road is going nicely across the middle of the screen. And then we've got some cars and bikes passing through the road, creating a bit of atmosphere and something going on in the shot. Now, if this was just a blank shot of the road, it would create a very different feeling. You would create that feeling of emptiness. But in this instance, I wanna create the feeling that something is going on, things are happening. So some cars and bikes going through the shot, just add that little bit of detail that helps to take it from a boring shot to a much better shot. And number 10 is gonna be more of a principle than it is a shot, and it's gonna be combining different moves that I've already talked about throughout this video. Now, what this is gonna allow you to achieve is gonna allow you to achieve really nice cinematic combinations of shots and movements they're gonna just blow people's minds. They're just gonna be sat there watching thinking, how on earth did this person capture such incredible footage? And the only way they captured it is because they watched this video right here, giving them the 10 best cinematic drone shots to use when capturing amazing cinematic footage. Now, this has been the Mini 4 Pro and it's been absolutely fantastic throughout all of my flying and testing throughout the video and previously. 
Now I hope these 10 cinematic drone shots are going to transform your footage. In fact, I am 100% confident they will. They're not just going to take it to the next level. They're going to take it three, four, five levels above. So go away and practice all of these maneuvers. And if you want to improve your drone storytelling, make sure you go and check out this video right here, where I tell you the best things you can do to improve storytelling through your drone footage. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.